ordinary time. Let our sharing in this Eucharist in person and remotely strengthen us as we take off the cross and follow him. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Rich Stork, assisted by Deacon Dan Georgian. Today, let us remember in our prayers, Camelia Bufalino, Sharon Thurwell, Irene Zrazik, and the intentions of Frank and Brittany Leesman. In reverence for the liturgy, please check that you have silenced your cell phone and open your heart to God's grace. Please stand. And so as we once again acknowledge the truth within each of us that we are not perfect, that we do need God's healing, God's forgiveness, we call upon Jesus as that source of mercy. Lord Jesus, you summon us to take up the cross and follow you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your cross is an everlasting sign of your love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to bring salvation to all who embrace your cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. 
and join with me in giving glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and ever for the peace and peace and the Lord will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, for God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of your Father, we take away your sin of the world, have mercy on us. We take away your sin of the world, receive our prayer. For you alone have the way of our dear Lord Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your careful watch keep safe what you have nurtured. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and courage in my, is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last week, our gospel focused upon Peter, upon him being made the head of the apostles, and eventually to become the first of the many popes that we as a Christian people, as a Catholic people, have. Last week, the Lord said to Peter, you are a rock. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And today we hear the gospel that um, Rocky isn't quite as strong as he should be. As the Lord speaks to him about what it means to be a follower of Jesus, what it means to be in a leadership position. He said it means you're going to have to take up a cross soon. And he said and that's what's going to be happening to me. I'm going to be going out to Jerusalem and then he will can speak ill of me. They will look for ways in which to press charges against me. And eventually they will put me to death. But I will rise from the dead. And as Peter hears this, he says, God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen. And then the Lord re rebukes Peter. He calls him a Satan. He almost curses him. He said, you know, get behind me. You're an obstacle to, to what my mission is here on earth, to where I am being called by my Father. Called to bring resurrection, to bring new life to the world. 
Being a leader is not always easy. You know, so often we hear people asking for wisdom, for discernment, being able to see where the, what the truth is in the midst of all of the voices that they, they hear surrounding them. Today's first reading from the prophet Jeremiah again finds Jeremiah in a similar situation because the message that the Lord asked him to convey to the people because they had turned away from him was hard news, things that they didn't want to hear. And they talked about denouncing him and casting him away and, you know, get away from us. We, we want to hear good news and you're giving us all of this that is getting to our minds and our hearts, telling us that, you know, the Lord doesn't see the fullness of who we are. And as it says that Jeremiah struggled with that, he wanted to walk away from the Lord. He said, you duped me. You, you gave me the wrong message. And yet something inside of him, the message, the truth, was burning within him. And it, he just couldn't reconcile not proclaiming it, not making that news known to the people of his time. St. Paul today himself, again, is asking the people of, of Rome to, to do that soul-searching, to find that, you know, that, that how are they connected to God? It's not through the pagan gods that are surrounding them, but, but it's through, the, through God, Father, Son, and Spirit, the God who has given his life for us, who has allowed those traits of being a good leader to be manifested. And that he has come to call people to the fullness of life at the end of time. Words that you know, we sometimes don't want to hear, that we have to take up our cross. And each of us has our own particular cross that we need to carry. Some of the things are visible in terms of maybe physical appearance. Other things are emotional, they're with inside of us, they're struggles that we have, trying to reconcile our, our faith with what we see happening in the world. Part of it maybe is that we sometimes just don't want to face the reality that we are living in, whether it be the COVID epidemic, whether it be you know, the racism that we see around us, how even though we are told over and over again that we're made in the image and likeness of God, somehow or another our skin makes us different. And sometimes we don't want to bring about that dialogue, bring about that trying to understand each other, where we're coming from, where, what we see as important, what really matters to us in our life. And so as we struggle, as we realize that you know, Jesus in his own way tells us, come after me. You're going to have to deny the things that maybe you hold as signs of your importance, signs of your, your wealth, your prestige, your power. Put aside those things and look and see what I am calling you to. To be one with each other bring peace into the midst of, of situations that are filled with tension and anxiety. Talks about losing our life. And I think you as parents, as, God, as grandparents, know again the times that you have, in a sense, put your loved one first before yourself because that was the thing that needed to be done. It was a little bit of dying inside of yourself, but it was also to bring about some better goodness and better feelings and love for the one you're focusing on. It talks about also finding our lives, finding our life in union with Christ. And Jesus who gave his life for us told us that we will all be called to the fullness of life and to share again the, the gifts that God has graced us with. 
And so this day we celebrate the, those gifts. Certainly the word that is here, the truth that's in our midst. And the Eucharist, the sacraments that are given to us to nourish our life, to nourish our faith. The opportunities for us to gather together again in the church. Opportunities for us to see the goodness of one another. Maybe our faces aren't completely unveiled, but maybe we see even more perceptively into each other's eyes, into the eyes that are, in a sense, kind of reflecting what's, good, what's within our hearts. And so rejoice in being able to be with one another, to, to gather again as God's holy people. We talked about glory with, with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Alleluia we talked about in our verses told us that may the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. So we are a people filled with hope that things will indeed manifest themselves in the ways in which our God is, is calling us all to do the, the good things of, of His ways. We come today as a people of faith. We come acknowledging that we truly are dependent upon our God. And so I'd like to invite you to stand with me as we once again profess those truths of our faith. is, guide us by your Spirit, O Lord. Guide us by your Spirit, O Lord. The God's Holy Church serve as a model for us to take up Christ's cross and to reach out and care for the poor, the vulnerable, and the suffering, wherever they may be, we pray. Guide us by your Spirit, O Lord. That lawmakers listen to all who cry out for justice, for kindness, and for mercy when crafting legislation, we pray. Guide us by your Spirit, O Lord. That victims of injustice, whether social, economic, or civil, know the Lord's abiding presence in their lives, we pray. Guide us by your Spirit, O Lord. That those who are impoverished, especially due to this pandemic, receive the assistance necessary to provide for themselves and their families, we pray. Guide us by your Spirit, O Lord. That those who feel unable to bear the burdens of their cross, Find strength and hope in the example of Jesus and the support of companions on their journey. We pray. Guide us in your spirit, O Lord. That all gathered here be strengthened in our commitment to deny ourselves, pick up our crosses, and lead lives of true discipleship. We pray. 
Guide us in your spirit, O Lord, that the sick manifest and maintain the power of hope in the midst of anguish and pain, especially Mary Ann, Gino Millock, Tony Meyer, and those who, have, who are infected with or recovering from the coronavirus, as well as those on our parish prayer list and those who care for them, we pray. Guide us in your spirit, O Lord that the faithful departed may be welcomed by God into the eternal joy of heaven, especially Dolores Maley, Brian Malloy, as well as those who have died from the coronavirus, we pray. Guide us in your spirit, O Lord. We gather our own prayers that we bring before the Lord, and we call upon Heavenly Father. Your Son shows us that the cross is the way to freedom and the fullness of joy. Show us your kindness and mercy as we offer these prayers for all those carrying crosses. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, the Lord, until you come again. And therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and our Mother, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, your glorious martyrs, our own patron saints, and all the saints of this constant intercession in your presence, we rely for our unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity all of us who are your pilgrim people, your pilgrim church here on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Cardinal, with his assisting bishops, with Daniel, our pastor, with the clergy, and with all the people that your Son has gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all those who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give them kind admittance to your kingdom. It's there that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon this world all that is good. Through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And we stand strong with each other, the Lord, as we find ourselves again praying the words that Brother Jesus taught us to pray. Always
let us acknowledge one another's presence and love every piece that we can do. While our ministers and viewers are coming forward, again, just a reminder of, as we come forward for Eucharist, again, our volunteers, our ushers will be escorting you forward. And we ask you again to keep that, that physical distance between yourself and those behind you. And I ask that, uh, again, as we share the Eucharist, that as you come forward, we need to get a, again, offer the Eucharist to you and it'll be in your hand. And so as we make that profession of faith, as you say amen, and you hear the body of Christ, can I ask you to step aside, maybe about six feet, remove your mask to the down or off your ear, receive the Eucharist, and then return back to your, your place in the queue. I'm going to ask you again to pray for each other as we come forward, because it isn't just my Mass, it's our Mass. And we are the people who continue to follow the, the leadership of Christ. We, in a sense, bring our crosses before the Lord, and asking the Lord to transform them so that we may continue to be able to carry them. Um, there may be some who cannot or choose not to receive the Eucharist on the hand. And at this point, that's the only option we have other than if you go on a blessing, if you cross your arms over you, you will give you the blessing. But we call upon our Lord Jesus. We call upon Him as the Lamb of God. You take, take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Take away the sin of the world, and peace. We feel as we once again acknowledge the dependency upon our Lord. We call upon the Lord. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And blessed are those who are called to the table of the Lord of the Lamb. Lord, Lord,
see a smile over by the organist because I forgot my glasses. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, since some of us are unable to share the Blessed Sacrament in the same manner as we are accustomed, I invite us to pray an act of spiritual communion with our brothers and sisters. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. You may drop off your contribution in the collection boxes as you leave church. And thank you for sharing today with us. Again, our prayers continue to share and we can surround you with our prayers. It's not just here in this building, but as we are sent forth to continue to pray for each other and, and to exercise that corporal work of mercy of being very tuned to very those who passed from this life. But we're sent forth with the blessing. So the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of our God go with us, the blessing of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Amen. Amen.